Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 88 of the Herbal Hyacinth podcast titled Merciless Monarchs. And today we are with Hu and Rissa, and you can say hi. Hello. Hello. So this chapter, as always, is amazing, and I can't wait to get into it. And I'm so excited that we, we each chose a section to do, and I'm so excited that I get the Dakistan section. <laughs> oh, okay. And also, I'm super like extra excited because I just read the episode like within the last half hour. So due to life circumstances. So my emotions are still at their highest. <laughs> so we start off with um, Dakistan, which we should clarify is Dakin and Tristan are sitting together on the couch and discussing the monarchy and um, what they've done and their obstinacy. So Trist, um, Dakin says, this, this is a recap of last time, ever since the Avastars how do we pronounce it? Avesters? Avester? I don't know. That's how I think most people do it. Avester. Avester. It sounds like Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with Avastar because why not? It sounds like a star and that's nice. <laughs> Ordered the assassination of those poor people. They signed their own demise. And we have, you know, the symbolism of the crackling fire and uh, things heating up. And he is clear, clearly very, very tense. He's ripping his his arm, he's upset. He said, I told them, I told King Edward his policies needed to change, um, which I find interesting that he worked for King Edward at the time because he must have been very young, like maybe 20s. So for him mm -hmm. to be that close to the king is surprising, I would say. Maybe he might have some ties of his own, like maybe the Rhymesville family um, was tied to the. Uh, to the royals and to other nobles and they were pretty high up already in the social hierarchy but we don't really know yet because doc and only rhymes all we've met <laughs> yeah, yeah i can was, see that though mm -hmm. maybe maybe we'll get a scene where tristan meets the in-laws or sees them again <laughs> i was thinking also that it, it could be an indication of how talented and intelligent doc was that he had such a high position at a young age that he was just, you know, a really talented person, which I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> I know there are a lot of Dokken fans who would be happy for with that interpretation. <laughs> yep, yep. And he says the discontentment was ever growing, but of course he never supported um, criticism very well. Philip is not very far from that, even if freedom of expression was slightly improved on the surface. So, uh, uh, this doesn't bode too well. You know, it's interesting. I mentioned before that I approached this story. And the monarchy with like a fresh slate and the monarchy if anything with a positive spin but now i'm realizing like they are not portrayed in a good light at all like they did not have expression of freedom and tristan is mm -hmm. trying to comfort Dokken, and he puts his hand on his hand <gasps> this is just the beginning of this whole arc of beautiful touching <laughs> and um tristan says there had been other minor protest groups before that eventually vanished but the snapdragon were the first to know so much about what the royals had done so Hmm. Now we know the snapdragons must be connected in some way to the royals so that they know what they've done. Interesting. And he says, I remember those pamphlets falling down from the sky. Their throw was never to be seen. And there's a scene of young Tristan with just a mustache, a little, little slim mustache, standing um, in the square with papers falling down. And it really, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of when he stood up there um, talking down the crowd that was upset right after the first um like the first day with the, the purple hyacinth killing. Did you guys mm -hmm. think of that as well? Um, no, actually, but I definitely see it now. And he looks so much younger and he sells his uh, middle glasses. I'm <laughs> honestly, I was more thinking about the whole, uh, what happened before there had been minor protest groups before that eventually vanished. And the like, Philip is not that far, that stuff. Because we did see this coming there were a lot of hints to this before, especially in like episode 66. And Mindy, like you sort of said, um, you came into this with sort of a more fresh slate, maybe a little bit of a positive viewing towards the monarchs. But now that you're seeing that in this story, they're not that great people. And I think that's the problem when there's too much power to a select group of people, especially people that the people didn't choose because I mean, with any group, really, there's secrets at the top, and we see this here with the monarchs, because there's no one to keep them in check as they limit the freedom of expression and all the power 
powerful people or more like you know twit they have the powerful people twisted around their fingers so i don't know what the term is but yeah the royals just have a lot of power and they use that power to restrict others and so because they restricted so much criticism and because they were restricting other socialist groups that's what really enabled snapdragon to rise and that is why um people before myself uh, one of the forefronters <laughs> that's why people thought that it was the royals behind the orion massacre and we seemed to be correct and you know we see tristan sitting there young tristan looking at the pamphlet and Dokken, who was just snazzy looking as usual with those intense green eyes said they only made five editions of those pamphlets in the two years they were around so i'm kind of going to Keep those numbers on the back of my mind, two years, five pamphlets. I don't know, maybe it'll be important. Yeah. And, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. I was like, mm, okay, okay. Maybe <laughs> there might be like some sort of scavenger hunt for the other four because it seems like, um, it seems like Lauren has won. But if Dokken knows about this and he knows the number, he might have the other four. Depends. And mm -hmm. Tristan knows that Lauren has one of the pamphlets. I'm, I don't remember if he took it from her board though. Well, it was did, on the board, but, but yeah, sure. I don't think he took it off. I, I just yeah. reread that episode recently. But mm -hmm. yeah, Lauren should like go back up to that attic and like look at every single box. Like, what is in there? <laughs> Besides for what's in Kieran's boxes, I also want to know what's there. But like, there's probably more information in that attic. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> There's like more information in that attic than there has been in the entire series so far. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> this is one of those things where if we could talk to the characters, we would like finish the story in like two episodes. Be like, go to the attic; it's all there. <laughs> exactly. Like you know what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> we can skip all the drama and just like finish this right here. I agree. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, and Dawkins says, but every single line in all of them was nothing but absolute truth. So he is, um, he believes everything that the Snapdragon said, which um, shows you what side he's on. And Tristan is also, you know, with him. He says taxes after taxes, cuts, false promises, you know, listing things that get about the system back then that was bad, that the Snapdragon was against. And he says protests were inevitable, but they were all shot down. Anything close to what the Snapdragon published was illegal and tracked down by the Secret Services. Oh. And he says, journalists, and now um, Dawkins says, journalists, radio presenters, politicians, lay people lost their jobs for much less. And he's standing, he goes over to the fireplace and he stands there and looks at it and he said, um, were interrogated, some had to serve time in jail and some disappeared. Edward was intransigent and cruel. Mm. This is terrible. This is awful stuff that we're learning about the situation back then and what the monarchs did. I mean, yeah, like, you, you were right. Of, yeah, I was right. <laughs> um, disappeared is a important one because, I mean, what if it was Delaney? Delaney, we don't know what Delaney's job was, but he may have been one of the people who disappeared because Lauren does say. Like, oh, there's no files on the lady. I couldn't find him anywhere. Mm -hmm. And disappeared implies that not only did they die, but their public records and like any record of them was erased as well. You know, I have kind this weird. Like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Thing. Oh, sorry, you go. I, I don't know why, but in my mind, Robin Delaney is a woman and I always associate her with Cigar Lady. I don't think um, Robin Delaney has been confirmed to be a man. I think the only person that talked about Robin was Sandman. And I don't think they use a gender. And oh, really? I don't know why. I think it's because in my head, Robin is Robin is both a man and a woman's name. I always think it's the cigar lady. <laughs> oh, I should check that. Oh, I I don't know. When I think of Robin, I think of like um, Robin from like Batman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know something? Since they are Batman inspired, that might actually feature. I don't know who. What's the who, who is Robin and Batman? I don't know anything about the story of Batman. So who is Robin and what's his role in the Batman um, story? I'm not too familiar with Batman, but he's like Batman's sidekick. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like his protege, yeah, so. like mm -hmm. adopts him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
story, I guess that would be somebody helping the guy on the good side. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we may be reading too much into it. Yeah, before I thought <laughs> that, um, because Sandman, there was a body there like in the explosion, but it obviously was not Sandman's body. I thought that it was Delaney's body that they used instead. Sandman said that he, I don't think he said this when Lauren was around. I think he said it to, no. He did say it. He said, Robin, somebody said, I don't think Sam, I don't, gosh, somebody said um, that Robin Delaney died, was ex- like, was executed shortly afterwards. So, but I don't remember if it was said around Lauren so that, so that we know if it's true or not. Don't I think that. it was sake talking to Bella. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean, we have no reason to assume that he was lying, but um, I guess we, we don't, we still don't know for sure, but based on that it sounds like he was he or she was executed right afterward um afterwards like not then Mm -hmm. yeah i think it was lauren listening into their conversation so she probably would have heard a lie Mm, okay i should review that (laughs) so anywho this is just very incriminating terrible information we're finding out and it's clearly bothering dokken a lot he's um looking at the fire unable to look at tristan and now i mean this picture of him his face looks super aged over here he looks like he has like this burden on his shoulders and he says you have no idea how far his crimes go he he looks like a man who has seen things that he doesn't want Mm -hmm. to remember Mm -hmm. a very like somber picture yeah yeah Dokken, you are not helping your susness right now. People, like, uh, you're looking very snapdragon-y and therefore psc right now. <laughs> Until there's something else that he says, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? It's interesting because... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, let's just continue. Um, and then you have this focused picture of his eye. So again, like this haunted image has the fire is reflected in his eye. And he says, the members of the Snapdragon knew it better than anything else, which again, like we said, it's incriminating himself. Anything connected to the Snapdragon was eradicated. The texts, the headquarters, their members. Mm. And that's like, he's stabbing the fire as he says it. I mean, he's clearly angry and upset. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> terrible. I mean, it looks like he definitely knew those people, right? If he was in the Snapdragon. And though it's likely that he got this information from the royals too. He probably it looks like he lived he would he lived to see it. Like he lived it and he watched it happen. And I do think that on the Orion and Sons business card that Lauren found in episode 54, that was his handwriting in it that like they are gone there's nothing we can do you need to like save yourselves <laughs> i do think that was Dawkins handwriting yeah i think that's a good yeah mm-hmm. now Tristan tells us something interesting he says even when i became chief after hawk's promotion i barely had any information on this so it wasn't widely spread he said and Dawkins says it's probably one of the best kept secrets of the city only the highest ministers the secret services and hawks knew about this at the time Ooh. Hawks. So, you know, previously I was like, well, we don't, you know, I was, I reserved judgment on Hawks. I was like, he's a douchebag and like not a great dad, but like, I don't know, you know, what his, what his moral stance is, but he was um, aware of the assassinations. Uh, I mean, I'm going to assume he was pro them too. Yeah. He was the police chief at the time. So it makes sense that he would know, but instead of saying, Stefan, he says Hawks, implying several or a couple of them. And I personally think that Josephine is an apostle. I think she's an apostle. And then, I don't know why, whoa, that is so Raphael, smart. I don't know why I didn't pick up on that. Raphael may have been this, my, he might be the spy master. And so Raphael might know as well. Oh, if he is the spy master, oh wow. Or he got it from his parents. And that may have been why he left or, um, if he left either for PS reasons or for like spy master reasons, but Raphael in the last chapter saying that like he doesn't know where he's going does imply that someone else bought the ticket. We just don't know who. That is amazing. I'm so happy that you said that because it did not occur to me. And that is so smart. Yeah, that connected the dot for me too. I was like, wait, wait up. <laughs> oh gosh, the plot thickens. 
<laughs> it does also seem like Raphael is leaving from the Allendale train station in the last episode. So it that kind of does make me think that it might be the royals who bought the ticket because if it was the mm-hmm. PS, they would have known to like did not send an agent in there like right before the explosion because if like something had happened, they wouldn't want to lose that person. But the royals didn't know it was happening at the train station. So they would have been more likely to obliviously send someone in there mm-hmm. into that train station to go somewhere else. But like, I mean, if Raphael's train was like any later or if it was the ones that were later, he might have died. <laughs> But since the Phantom, I'm kind of assuming the Phantom Scythe had like some control over the trains that day. So I don't, I feel like they wouldn't have worried about it. Uh, most people thought that the, I think most of the Phantom Scythe knew that it was, or thought that it was supposed to be at the castle. But because that's how this, that's what the spy master thought him, um, himself or himself, I'm not sure. Um, so it would, I thought it was, it was just some, the police that were that were mis, uh, misinformed about. I thought that they were told that it would be at the castle, but the, really the Phantom Scythe knew it was going to be at the train station. I didn't know the Phantom Scythe were... Is this mentioned that the Phantom Scythe were the ones who also got wrong information? It was said that the spy master was the one who like told the royals and the police, and the spy master claimed that it was going to be at the castle, which if, which if the spy master just like, I believe it's like if they actually didn't know, it implies that the information being passed around was fake, like in the Phantom Scythe, kind of like some fake Marvel script for the actors or something like that. So they can't spoil the actual movie. If that makes sense. But my, that's my take on it. Okay. <sighs> yeah, no, Dokken, poor Dokken. He, you know, just rests his pushes his face on his hands and he says and I I was there all along I couldn't do anything to stop them and they couldn't say anything after the deed was done and this is all true but it's like a little shady and um I mean it sounds like let's just pretend we're not doubting him like if if he's just you know we're whatever he, he's saying like straight on a straightforward level that he was working with the royals but he couldn't stop them mm-hmm. and he couldn't say anything afterwards which it's a lot of guilt to live with but i wonder why like what why didn't he feel he could stop them or say anything like, was he afraid want- that he would lose his position and then have no influence was he afraid of his life he i mean if we doubt him <laughs> probably thought that like he would get targeted himself and because it is it does seem ever more likely that he was snapdragon he probably didn't want the royals like coming after him for that or just investigating him and for them to realize that he was snapdragon the whole time and if i doubt him more i do think that to some extent even if he was unwilling in it he did help out with ordering or just planning the eradication of snapdragon and yeah i think that's the implication of it to be honest yeah. i would lean more that way just with where everything's going with the storyline and i mean more yet to be revealed of course but i just even this conversation the way this is being like put it's the guilt is heavy man like you it's just again as we said you, the the sus the susometer is like going up a little <laughs> bit more and more and you're like okay so yeah. I think your interpretation I would I would uh, with the latter I would lean more that that he had his hand in it and then as well um, he would have been aiding or complicit or just an accomplice in his friends and his. Uh-huh. Any friends in his friend's deaths because if he was snapdragon and he did help and he was the one who was partly behind their deaths like that's a that's a yikes for me yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's a nope <laughs> like oh my gosh want well, to like you Dokken don't do anything to spoil it <laughs> and after all of these revelations I do think that it is possible for my old theory where 
it was actually the royals behind the Sinclair's deaths. I do think that that theory might still be possible to an extent. And so if the royals did plan the Sinclair's deaths and Dawkins was helping out the royals with all of this, Dawkins may have been, he might have been an accomplice in the death of Tristan's family and then reading this scene with like that possibility in mind is also a very big yikes it's like red flags is what I'm saying like it's all like ding 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 you're like uh oh uh oh uh oh and you're you're like resisting a little bit you're like wait but 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 then when you think about it I just I won't be surprised is what I'm gonna say when this like (laughs) the cards are laid out (laughs) I'm 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 on camp sus yeah, Sorry, Mindy. The, I'm just, I'm there. I'm there. I think the one thing that this story is drilling into our heads and at least into my head is that we start out with our conceived notions of like, what's, who's good, who's bad, who's on the right side, who's on the wrong side. And now we are totally mixed up. Like who's, and I don't think anyone can be directly um, defined as either black or white. I think everybody in this story is great, except for maybe Lila. <laughs> like everybody is not perfect. And we don't know exactly how the cars are going to fall out at the end, but like, Mm -hmm. it's just very confusing. And I think we're learning that it's hard to Mm -hmm. be morally um, clear. Exactly. And I think that was from the beginning meant to be like that way. I always got that vibe from the beginning that that's what this story was going to be about. Obviously, because Lauren herself, you know, and um, the whole dynamic between her and Karen, like everything like that already kind of implied this kind of like, who's good, who's bad, what is good, what's bad, (laughs) what level of good and bad. And as it progresses, it just seems to like the tangled web of politics lies and like, and of the monarch, you know, that are pretty, you know, tells as old as our history goes, like even our just human history. So it's like, it's a story, you know, and you hate, and it's like coming full circle, you know, like this is a familiar story. Like it's like you want there to be straightforward good guys, you know, you want to be like, yeah, this was my character was doing the right thing and it was for the right reasons, but this isn't that kind of webtoon. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's just not that kind of webtoon. <laughs> oh yeah. And I do think that the re uh for a reason. <laughs> that everything's just not as clear and why there's no one who's really that good or bad is because the true villain of the story or like the true antagonist of the story is sort of like this overarching system which makes Mm -hmm. people the way they are it's what creates the phantom scythe and really the antagonists of the story or the people who uphold that system. So like the royals, they are the ones who technically created it and they are the ones who are enforcing it. And episode 68 got really close to just basically telling us outright that the police are villains in a lot of situations. Like they are bad people in a lot of situations who uphold this system, who enforce it. Like the police are the ones who are enforcing it the most. Yeah, it's just you know the royals who order the enforcement and yeah. It was funny in my head because I keep, because you know in my head Phantom Scythe is the bad guys and and now I'm learning the royals are the bad guys. I keep thinking that the royals are Phantom Scythe somehow, and then I have to remind myself that like they're officially diametrically opposed. But honestly, I am so suspicious of like somebody in the royals being in the Phantom Scythe. Um. That's just my secret theory. That I guess if that's if I do have a fan a theory to contribute, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's I'm all like, coming from the top and something's rotten at the top. Exactly. I think have you seen the crown at all? Like the crown with like Queen Elizabeth. Anyway, I've been watching that of late. And I'm always like, and that story of the actual history of like Britain, the the monarch, the royalty, they're puppets essentially, you know, PR. Like they don't really get any government influence. And I like the fact that this story kind of reminds me in a way, except the insidious part is the monarch does have the power and they are the ones like with this kind of, um, I I really do feel like, do you think it's going to be one person really pulling the strings of the whole thing? Or you think it's going to be several in cahoots? Like we know where the 
but raw is that was what I'm saying. Do you think it's going to be just one person who's just like the ultimate, like surprise, Scooby-Doo rip off my mask. Or do you think it's just going to be this access of these people in key positions, like in the Phantom site, in the Royal tea and like, who've been just like doing this whole, like running this whole show. What are your thoughts? Definitely the latter. There's so many, we've been introduced to so many characters and so many different motivations and just so many characters in like actual powerful places and their influence on the story that it would make most sense if all of them were trying to secretly get what they wanted and everything is just sort of gliding and creating the conflict that we see because Mm -hmm. there's like opposing um, motives, opposing morals and stuff all of that and uh, when it all comes together it creates the beautiful mess that is purple hyacinth <laughs> and society <laughs> like basically like their society <laughs> in a nutshell like they live in a society and it's a real bad one <laughs> yeah, so i mean from a from a like a real life perspective it does make sense to me that it would be that like it doesn't make sense to me that only one person could have so much power. But I'm and honestly, the truth is there have been dictatorships where, you know, I mean, all over the world where you do have that concentration of power in one person. But I mean, just in terms of um, analyzing the story, you know, I do think there is one leader because he might share power with other people. But just in terms of the person, you know, um, it's been said several times that, you know, the identity of the leader. The, so I think that that if there's an actual person who's the leader. Um, but it could be that he shares the power with other people as well. Yeah, and that's why I'm kind of throwing in there because I do more believe it is the society, like the whole narrative is to look at this as a whole, like, you know, and why everyone's making the decisions they have. But there is the other side that there is this person that we've yet to, like, really, we don't know. We just don't know yet. There is, we haven't met, basically, this is a chessboard and we haven't seen the queen or king yet. That's basically what we're saying is like, we haven't seen the queen. We've seen like all the pawns, the bishops, the knights, but I don't, I don't believe we've seen the king or queen. I don't know. Do you think we have? And we're just like overthinking it, or what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I do think that you know, Redcliffe. We haven't met him yet, but he might be the leader. Mm-hmm. And the way that he's just sort of loomed over the story so far does sort of you know give the um, metaphor sort of vibe, as you said, like of a chess player. And these are all the pieces, but Redcliffe, who's sort of looming over the story, he is the actual player. And these are his pawns, and these are his pieces that he is, and he is the one pulling the strings. And then the other players, honestly, I wouldn't even, even say that Lauren is the other player. She's been manipulated and she doesn't know enough. So it really, I don't think there is another player. It's one player pulling, or I guess it's one player sort of it trickles down like one player is sort of creating the central conflict or sort of overlooming conflict and then the other characters who are close to him but not entirely are then trying to play the board as everything is changing and then we start off with Lauren at the bottom who doesn't know anything and is slowly climbing her way to the top Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't go to say that she is the other player because no, I don't think she's even really on enough. the board. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> like, I, mean, just, I, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, board was just like, <laughs> oh, that makes no sense because I was just like, oh, um, I think there's multiple people pulling the strings, but now I'm like, there's one person pulling the strings. I, well, like, I can... I, again, the writers are doing this thing where it's like a push and pull thing where I, mm-hmm. I, I go between the two, where I'm just like, I, I almost... I'm holding off because I'm like there could be one more plot twist yet to come and then it could be like oh my gosh like I never thought of it you know just because they've done that to me a few times so I'm like "Mm, I don't trust you like I'm awake because I feel like I have a clear (laughs) vision of things until like I get to a chapter and I'm like "Uh uh-uh I did not I did not have a clear vision of what what was about to go down in this chapter like I was like this is not the way this was supposed to go which is why I love this one too like honestly um there are things you can kind of like infer there's a lot of symbolism as said but like there are times I'm like who's that like how did that what like you know like which I love so um I like the intrigue I'm all for the intrigue so for me when when we're all like 
saying like, Ooh, what's it going to be next? I'm like, Oh, just wait. We just don't know. We just don't know yet. Anyway, that's me. But I feel like food has really organized thoughts when it comes to like the connections. Cause I'm kind of more sporadic and I'll be like, Oh yeah. Like 10 chapters ago. I remember, you know, <laughs> if I catch on, it's probably a good day. So if anything, food probably has the better hold of the story. I'm more like, I think I do maybe question mark. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop rambling. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm um, also ready to be completely surprised. I don't know. I feel like we haven't met the leader yet, but I'm also ready to be completely surprised and have it someone we know. And the real big thing that I am thinking will happen is that we will be completely surprised by both who the leader is and their motives. I feel like we will learn whatever, whenever we do get to learn about the, who the leader is and why they did what they did, I feel like that will completely blow our minds and will yeah. twist everything that we thought we knew about the story. That's just my hope. Oh, yeah, it's, I definitely agree. Yeah. I do feel like it's a story that's going to bring something back to the first chapter that's going to bring something like all the way back and we're going to be like oh my gosh like how did we like not see it or like oh my gosh this was this is how they thought like that's what I believe as well but um yeah yeah, it's exciting it's exciting is what I mean it's getting more exciting like I feel like it's like getting to the point where I'm just like okay curtain reveal let's go let's go like I want to because they're yeah. they're dropping I'm a, so much right I'm now. more like I'm like I want the whole thing to be written already so I could just binge and read the whole thing I like can't wait <laughs> exactly because I'm like okay we're almost there but are we are we see this is what I don't know <laughs> if the leader has been revealed already I have to give props to Sophie F because hiding it I imagine is not easy because the fans will dissect everything and <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, just but they're probably, us, like, they they're probably like like oh, that's yeah like, they're probably yeah. if they Hello did they're props. probably like the whole time they come and like check out everyone's theories and they're like <laughs> like you'll mm-hmm. never guess but like you never know <laughs> they probably get a hoot out of it anyway I think you're right though it at this point yeah, but at the same time they've done some they've done some some twists that I'm like I did not see coming with character. So like, I'm not, I couldn't say I'm a hundred percent sure that I could like rule out that we haven't met the leader yet. There are just, there are a few that I could be like, you know, they're just sus anyway. (laughs) So like, like maybe, you know, they're just sus in general. So like, who knows, who knows? But if it, if it was to like her, it would be someone we didn't want to be. Like we're like resisting for it to be and then it's revealed and then break our hearts. Like that's the path that I don't, I hope it doesn't go because that would be like, no, no, don't do that. And then I'd be like, stop, stop this from happening. Anyway, I've, I've, I've attached these characters as flawed as they are. So I'm like, don't do it. Kind of like how Mindy's feeling in this chapter where our, our man is, is pretty sus. Our man is pretty sus right now. <laughs> That's, I think, why the Rosenfeld is leader theory is one of my favorites, because it is sort of revolutionary in a sense. Like, we hadn't really considered him at all, and he was just Mm -hmm. kept to the sidelines for most of our theorizing, but it came up pretty recently, and I just adore it so much, because it made so much sense, it fit well with the story, and it would be such a beautiful sort of, I don't know, emotional story. Mm-hmm. If we have this moment where Mr. Rosenthal is actually alive, but he talks about how he lost his son to, to this cause and it made him like question, like, is it even worth it? And it does sort of like bring up the question again in the story, how far are you willing to go for um, a cause? And like, if Ms. Mr. Rosenthal was the leader and, and Dylan is actually dead, then like, damn, <laughs> it's pretty serious. and but it would lead to a lot of just intriguing questions and philosophical or philosophical oh God. anyways uh questions about it all yeah I do love when there's a fan theory that like fits too well and you can't like unsee it after you see it because you're like wait wait this is too good <laughs> like this this has to happen because if it doesn't it's like a missed opportunity at this point I agree I I, I like that as well I think I think it's going to be sad. I really feel like this is going to be, it's going to be a very despairing moment when that, that falls down. And it could be something akin to a story like that, where 
like, again, we're going to be like, what are we really fighting against? And what are we really fighting for? And like, has this been fighting against ourselves the whole time? Like that kind of sad dilemma. And that's just because that's how this comic has been. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I don't want it to be like that. Cause I'd rather be exciting twist where it's not just sadness, but it's going to be sadness. <laughs> that's what my heart feels. <laughs> I'm totally with you. And I think that, um, I think that's what is more satisfying to me as a, as a, not kid because you know you'll notice like in kids movies there's um the big bad there's always like the villain is yeah. very clear like this is the bad guy these are the good guys and you know um you get rid of the bad guy and everything's happy and it's very unambiguous and i do agree with you that um this story will be tragic and like will be morally ambiguous and when we do find out like who the leader is and like with your theory with Mr. Rosenthal like was it worth it with you saying well what are we fighting for are we fighting each other I do think it'll be something like that where everything will just be mussed up and <laughs> smoky and uncertain and you're left not knowing what to think about anything <laughs> yeah I don't expect a happy ending to this story at all to be I, to wait, be free I, I expect a somewhat happy ending I expect some people to be in love that's all <laughs> as a shipper I agree with you as a shipper I'm like I need that to at least happen for me but I've been I've been burned before um I don't know there is this webtoon about werewolves I don't know if you ever read it I think it's Haru it's something Haru on, on webtoons not spoiler spoiler cute cute story that ends up with like morally questions of everything and sadness so like I've been burned before I've been burned before and I'm just like okay let's like let this happen anyway where where are we in this chapter yeah, I mean, no, we're, still, we're still in them just I mean I feel like this is a good discussion because I feel like everyone's feeling it at this point kind of like we have a lot of information but we don't have the the answer is what I mean. That's what I mean. We don't have any answers. <laughs> we don't have I mean, any answers. We have information, but we don't have any. But if we all go to the attic. <laughs> right. We'll get the answers. We'll, get, we'll all get the answers. It's fine. <laughs> the new archives. Yeah, Lauren's yeah. attic. <laughs> yeah, Lauren's attic. <laughs> exactly. That should be a thing some, somehow. <laughs> so, anywho. Um, Tristan comes over and, and pats him on the back and he says, hey, and then Dokken says this. He says, February 25th of blank blank 16, exterminated in total secret. And Tristan is, you know, holding him on the back. So remember guys, when um, March's wife, Annabelle, when her date of death was obscured deliberately at the cemetery? Mm, maybe oh, it's, she died that yeah. day. Oh, <laughs> That's what I was oh. thinking. Oh no. <laughs> and yeah, this does confirm actually that it was, or it does seem to confirm that the royals were the ones behind their Rhine massacre because um, in episode 66, Lauren says that there was a massacre mm -hmm. at the print shop. According to the six recent records, the shop was shut down in February XX16 by the police. <laughs> and, you know, the royals. You looked up that date. The nice. police. So, yeah. I mean, the police sent by mm -hmm. the royals. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. There we go. Huh. Crazy. And Tristan is trying to comfort Dokken. Dokken looks like he feels very guilty. I mean, he is hunched over, looking at the fireplace, not looking at Tristan. Tristan's trying to comfort him. He says, you're a good man, Dokken. Oh, and then... And then oh, so cute. He lifts up Trish, um, Dokken's face. And he says, I know you can't always believe it, so let me. Oh, I'm just going to melt in a goo. Oh, it's too Literally, okay. Cute. The phrase, I love you, is dead. I know you can't always believe me, so let me, is the only valid declaration of love now. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth, though? Man, but it, it encompasses a lot, right? Like, it just, it's more than, Yeah. All we can see, yeah, there's nothing more. I can't even add any more to this because it's just, it's just what it is. And yeah, I love you is dead. And we got the t shirt, you know? <laughs> we joined the fan club. I love you is dead. This is the I only way now. This is the only can't way. Wait for my, I know you can't always believe it. So let me merch coming to yes, Society oh Six soon. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, oh gosh. Yes. I need this on like a pillow. <laughs> that I hug. <laughs> Speaking of like making it up to my husband for not spending enough time with him. I, after we finish, I should go downstairs and be like, I knew you can't always believe it. So let me, you're well, well, you are a good man. <laughs> oh, 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 too, too much. I think oh. you're a good man. Okay. So that's interesting because of the susness. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take away a little from the the feels because, like, let's be real here. The susometer is is on the rise and it's not going anywhere. And then escalate, like, as we continue. But you're a good man. Telling that to someone who has done atrocious things, like, is a heavy statement to them. Like, like if I if I like personally if I had done something that gotten people I know killed in horrendous ways had, was like part of all of this. That is like the thing I would not want to hear because it's like, am I like, I would start like bawling and being like, oh gosh, you know, like that would be my trigger world. Cause like, that's probably the, the thing I think I am the least, you know? Mm-hmm. So like props to him. If, if, you know, he's as involved as we think for keeping it straight. Cause if I heard that, I'd just be like, no, no. I would just be like, I break down. I'd be like, nah, no, nah, that's not what I am. <laughs> oh, I think, um, well, Tristan assumes, Tristan seems to think the Dakin is innocent and his only crime was just standing there not doing anything to stop it, mm-hmm. which we're not so sure about. But if, you know, I think the reason Tristan doesn't suspect Dakin is because he loves him and love his yeah, boy. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. But however, I do have something to say about that. So the you're a good man, because I just, you know, angst theories everywhere. Um, anyways, <laughs> you're a good man, Dakin. I do think that, yeah, I do think that it's possible that Tristan is pretty unaware of a lot of things. And because so he himself said that, like, I didn't even know much, like the royals didn't tell me anything. And that's why Dakin was like, only like the secret services and blah, 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 knew. And it's actually seeing like Tristan in that flashback earlier. It does make him seem pretty unaffiliated with that group. So um, like with any of the groups. So I do think oh. that Tristan is more of a third party in all of this sort of like morning Kieran. He's trying to figure it out. But I, I've had this theory for a while, but I do think that Tristan is sort of like loon, but doing this like running across the rooftops and more like actual digging and files and stuff mm-hmm. but if Tristan and that's why I do think that Tristan might actually be aware of Dawkins involvement a bit and trying to use Dawkins emotions against Dawkins to get Dawkin to reveal information that he did not have before Bob, Bob no, here's the think, plot twist guess who I Tristan is so- <laughs> I do think the two both genuinely like do love each other, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tristan was weaponizing Dawkins' love for him to try and get more information <laughs> because that's sort of the ruthless type of scheme that we have come to expect from something like Purple exactly. Hyacinth. Mm, yep, yep. Once you said it, I was like, yep, there it is. There it is. Yep. So you. <laughs> you just went from like I went from being sus of Tristan you know the whole series um and then now I'm in this scene I'm like oh he's just naive and blind and now you're making him seem calculated and <sighs> conniving again <laughs> oh <laughs> Who yeah is he? what's going on I'm so exactly. confused <laughs> he's the real leader it was him all along like who knows who knows at this point <laughs> but like that's why the, why like these scenes are interesting right because we'll change our opinion based on the information we have acquired before, you know? And we're like, mm-hmm. yes. Um, but if that is true, that's, I love you, but I want to get information from you. That's real manipulative and gross. And that feels icky on every, about every level, even more than Dawkins being more involved in that situation than we, you know, like, or maybe it's the same. I don't know. Everyone is sus. No one is I mean- safe. If Dokken was in accomplice in the death of Tristan's brother and sister-in-law and Tristan knew this, like he might be a little bit like, maybe I don't love you. This much. <laughs> exactly. Like that's like I it, it what's I don't know. 
because if he that. is yeah sorry <laughs> like so my sorry. brain is going like er, 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 as I'm trying to wrap around it because I'm like wait yeah but then if I just nowhere is safe nowhere <laughs> Their whole relationship gives me sort of a bit of blocky vibes, but also Lotura vibes if you've watched Voltron, because I feel like for both of them, it's like I've done something towards you that's horrible, but I still love you and I'm sorry that it has to be this way sort of vibes. Which which relationship in Voltron? Um, Lotura, Lotura oh. and mm-hmm. Allura. So like mm-hmm. it, it does sort of give me that like they're both, they both love each other, but the, at the same time, they have a bit of conflicting uh, motives, and yeah. they're both trying to use each other to further said motive. Yeah. By the way, if our if this whole theory about Doc and Tristan is true, it would mirror Lauren and Kieran a lot. Yep, that's what I said. It kind of reminds me of Lucky as well. Oh. <laughs> okay, I thought you were still quoting from Voltron because I don't know the Voltron name, so I thought it was oh, just it, it's like that. a mix of both for me, like a bit of Lotur and a bit of Loki, like the two yeah. combined, and then we get this. <laughs> and then I think that would be on purpose too. Like I think, I think if we if that is the right train of thought, it's very on purpose. Um, because it's almost like different stages too, if you really think about it. But anyway. Let's let's continue because we gotta we gotta get to the trauma baby. <laughs> we gotta get to the trauma baby scene. <laughs> so now he says something which to me is the most suspicious thing he says all evening. Oh yeah, I have, to, I have something very big to say about this. <laughs> Looks away from Tristan, who mm-hmm. is like in his face, who just said this most beautiful loving line to him, and he says, "Someone betrayed the Snapdragon, Tristan." Oh, to me, I'm like, that to me is like, I think it was him. he's feeling so guilty that he did it. Yeah, it was totally him. It has to be him. Like the way he looks away and it's like, he can't even accept it. He can't even look Tristan in the eyes the way he was just a moment before mm-hmm. as he says this. Like, dude, go to therapy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh. Go to jail and get there. Yeah, go to jail. <laughs> go to jail. But, but like jail, like everything is all mixed up. Who's right? Who's wrong? Is jail the right place for him? Like, for I mean, we we're all suspecting, right? We don't know anything for sure. But like, whew. And but then he does look Tristan in the eyes and he says, "The group managed to keep a complete anonymity, anonymity, and their headquarters were um, hidden for almost two years." Yeah, I I feel like he's making a confession here because the guilt is weighing on him and he can't. Mm-hmm. Oh, keep it and he's like this is the man who he loves who loves him and I think he's maybe in a way even trying to hint to him hey I'm the one who did it like you're you're the person you love is not who you think they you know I am and like mm-hmm. could you still love me if you knew that I did this or maybe he's trying to be like spare yourself from the heartbreak but uh but I think Tristan is going to get his heart broken either way. And I'm not ready for that. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I did not sign up for the sinking ship. Okay, guys. I was here for the ship that floats. <laughs> Look, well, I can find I mean, a way to make any ship sink. <laughs> uh, My friends okay. on the Discord know this very well. I it's okay. Rain it's okay. the angst. <laughs> I ran over the end. <laughs> I don't know if we have to say their ship is going to sink, even if all our theories are true, because I think that one of the themes of this comic is you can love people, even if they do bad things, because they're not just bad things. They're a combination of good things and bad things. My I theory mean, is they both did bad things. Like <laughs> if we went yeah. down that theory, they both did horrible things. And yeah, maybe they'd be like, you know, we all did things that like got many people killed, but let's hold hands. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking though, like, do you think Lauren would ever be able to forgive Kieran if Kieran was the person who killed Dawkin? Uh, not Dawkin, Dylan. Oh, I think so. Really? Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm an optimist, and like I'm like I want them to end up together, but like, yeah, I think so because I mean I think the whole point of this story is to is to understand that very point that you know people are murky and they do things because of a combination of bad situation being forced into it bad decisions Mm -hmm. no other choice um i do think that that would be obviously it would be a super traumatic moment but i do think that that would be kind of like a a, an arc a resolution where she learns to understand what the situation he was in if he had done that Mm -hmm. i think there'd be Um, rage i too i think there'd be a lot of i think 
Uh, I think Vandy's right though. I like, I mean, Cam Notch is going to like eat, eat Karen over a wall and be traumatized. But at the same time, she's come a long way. And as we said, like nothing, she's learning. She's learning the game essentially, which is being played right now. Again, she's not even on the board half the time, but she's starting to learn how this game is played. And so mm-hmm. I just, it's possible, but are, are you of different opinion, Foot? I actually don't know. I'm very conflicted because what Mindy said, I've reached a lot about. And so like, I definitely agree with that message, but just when I try to put myself in Lauren's shoes, or if I try to put myself in Dawson's shoes, like, or not Dawson, Kristen's shoes regarding like uh, Rachel and Alexander, I don't know if I would be able to do that necessarily because I, I agree with that message and it's such a powerful message, but just realistically, I don't know if it's actually, like, I don't know how realistic it would be, but I guess it is fiction. So you can suspend your disbelief a bit. I think it'd be a situation where she's suspected. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that rings very true to me about this is like, whenever I read anything about people in power, like in real life, um, anyone in in the position of leadership has done morally questionable things, no matter how how righteously they started out but just because literally being in a position of leadership you have to make decisions where there's no good choice and I can 100% see that their spouses um, or their whoever loves them um, family whatever friends um, can hate some things that they did and still love the rest of them Mm -hmm. so I mean we had that with ourselves like there's parts about myself that I hate and like I know when I do the wrong things and I still love myself because I'm a person you know same for my husband, mm-hmm. same for my kids. And um, and this is just that on a kind of a larger scale because like, I don't do mass murders. The worst I'll do is like be nasty to my husband. But, you know, I think that's just the the, the point of being human. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. Like it's an experience that I don't know any of us have really been, like ever had, but just imagine waking up every day and just you wake up next to the person who, took the lives of people that you adored and that you loved and who are no longer like in your life and the reason that they're no longer in your life is because of that person like I don't know if I would ever ever be able to get that really intimate with someone like that knowing uh, what they have taken from me and what they have taken from the people who I cared about realistically I say no I think that would be hard for anyone to do. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you killed my mom? Uh uh-huh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's something very visceral about it. But this is a comic world, and they are really kind of murking the water. And forgiveness, I think we need to, like, kind of look at this, too. For The forgiveness thing, like, what does that even look like? Like, what, how far does that go? Like, what is that going to represent? Mm-hmm. What level of, like, acceptance are we really talking about she could accept what he did and still feel like horrible about it she Mm -hmm. I think forgiveness is like something that people use usually to move on for themselves um I think that and I just think it'd be a trauma she'd carry for a long time like I don't think that's like a I've been through all this stuff and you know, I forgive you for what you did in a moment. I just don't believe that's how it would go, but it could, it could just be like, yeah. I'm a changed person and this is what's happening now. But like, I, I don't think it would be in that moment at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, if she does, it would be after another like hundred episodes. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm like, I just don't like her whole, her whole story, her, her, her rock, everything is based on the events that have happened everything like her whole existence everything is in rotation and if you take something if you try to resolve that too quickly or kind of take the rug out of that you know in a way that's disgen- disingenuous it can be awkward so I don't know we'll have to see as I said like could she forgive the author can do whatever they want the authors can do whatever they want but like what's gonna feel right to us or maybe it won't feel right at all who knows who mm-hmm. knows but this is all hypothetical if it was him (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) (laughs) I also think it does sort of beg the question a bit like Kieran has sort of taken the Dylans I guess in a sense he has taken the Dylans of probably so many other people 
to involve those people will likely not have the same sort of um, connection with like Karen as Lauren. It it is hard to think about because no one should feel obliged to forgive someone. Like you are not yeah. required to ever forgive someone for something. I mean, it's entirely on you. You'll probably feel better for forgiving them, but like you're not obligated to. Mm-hmm. But I think it it is sort of hard to think about how how many people, how many important people to someone else that Karen has killed. Like how many grieving families and friends has Karen left behind? And it's a topic that the comic doesn't focus too much on. Like we don't spend time with the families of Karen's victims or friends or anything, but that issue is still there. And it, it, I think it's a little fun commentary on our biases as an audience because we don't really talk about those people often, like the victims of Karen's murders, like not the like actual people who died, but also like their families and friends. And it's just, I find it interesting to us as an audience because we're biased towards Kieran because we know Kieran and we know his plight, but these families don't and these families still lost someone incredibly important to them. And I don't know how actually forgiving of Kieran we would be if we saw the story from their point of view. Yeah, exactly. I think it's because it's a fantasy obviously like we could compare this to like a vampire who kills all these people but yet the heroine falls in love with the vampire because he's hot you know like (laughs) but he's still a killer and it's just you know kind of like oh that's how it is and like you never think of those things it's just like fantasy versus reality uh there's an attraction to these characters because they are kind of supernatural they are kind of like otherworldly in a way um but definitely stuff that people can relate to on some level on some levels but like Lauren has an ability that's supernatural, you know, like Karen is, you know, they're both very skilled. Like it's just, there's a dissociation because it's fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. I think you just would get two different outfits. You're like, Lauren, the character, could she? There'd be probably a pretty healthy debate about it, but there'd be a debate. I feel like you said, in reality, could you? And then everyone would be like, "Eh." I think there'd be very, (laughs) you'd just be like, but he's hot. Like, you know? Like, who's that kid? I just forgot all about him. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I just think it's, it's interesting. Um, th- that could be, okay, by the way, that could be a whole other discussion of how much people ignore toxic things in comics for the sake of fantasy. And I feel like that's an interesting discussion because sometimes fantasy can be toxic, but it is an outlet for someone and it's fa- fantasy, so it's harmless. Sorry, mm-hmm. that's a whole nother conversation. I would love to have that with a bunch of people from different fandoms <laughs> because some people don't understand that, like how much they've kind of like overlooked until they're like, why do you guys think this is like totally okay to be like promoting? I heard a lot of stuff I think about Olympus lore in some relationships recently. So I've been thinking about it a lot. Anywho's, sorry, I just went on a tangent. I just think that's a really interesting discussion, to be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it is confirmed that Kieran has killed children before. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I know that he was forced to and stuff like he was ordered to and something bad would have happened to him, um, likely had he not. But it's, it's heavy to think about because those kids had their mm-hmm. whole lives ahead of them. Mm-hmm. And they were most likely innocent in the whole scheme of things. Like their kids are not phantom scythe apostles but yeah exactly and um that's kind of like i would say the saddest part of this comic is the innocent the real like the ones we know are like the most innocent probably suffer the most in this world like (laughs) the most like it's like everyone else the worse you get the more you'll survive in this comic the more innocent you are the more uh you blow up in a train station you know like that's just (laughs) what happens like that's the rules of this universe and it's just what it is the best way to survive in this place is to commit a war is to commit a war crime. <laughs> exactly, exactly. See, you see what I thought. Yeah, commit a war crime, be on the police squad, but the right side of the police squad. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's ways to survive this game. This is like, <laughs> it's it's a dystopia. It's like a or whatever. What's a? I guess it would be a dystopia. Eh, I don't know what the term would be for it, but 
it's not it's not a happy world this is not a happy place <laughs> but i was actually thinking so when you were talking about um lauren being able to forgive dylan so you said that i'm sorry <laughs> forgive kieran for for potentially yeah. killing dylan you said that you can't see her doing it because she has been obsessed with dylan for so long i actually think it might be an interesting um character growth for her because she's a kind of person who is like unnecessarily obsessed um and feels guilty and you know just can't move on from the past because mm -hmm. so it might be a good like this is her final redemption where she's like okay I can move on I can let go yeah and that's what I mean like in a comic sense that's how you could wrap it up I actually mean that like I can't see it her doing it easily because I as like someone who likes to see more in-depth writing want don't want it to see it like neatly be like okay and I made this journey and here's the end. I want to be like, no, this was messed up. I got to like muck through it a lot. But like in a comic sense, you are completely right. Like that could be the way her arc ends is like coming to, which is good. I, I won't say I'm happy with it, but it's, it's a way to resolve things. I, on the other hand, I'm just like, nah, <laughs> nah. like, uh, I don't know. I oh. want to, Yeah. Yeah, I think it depends on if you think the story will end as a tragedy or if, if it will have some kind of satisfying resolution. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think there's always, there's going to be some tragedy mixed up with that with the ending. But it's like, do you think the whole like it's going to be end on a sour note where like nothing is good, or will it be there be some good resolution and some growth and some completion? I think that's like the it, main question. I'm an optimist, and I always think I always think everything will end well. But I may be wrong. I mean, if their symbol is reader's the tears, so. Yeah, no worries. I was, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. I was like, if you were asked me this at the beginning when I started this, I'd be camp positivity. But at this point, I'm camp like, nah, it's going to burn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I just don't, I think they could, just so we don't all get to the end and want to like die inside. <laughs> but have they really given us any happy ending per se yet? Like any kind of like glimpse of like, oh, things will be like better for any character. Like if we really look at it. <laughs> Lucas did walk off with Lila after the bar. Oh yeah. <laughs> but you didn't see the carriage hit them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like yeah. outside. <laughs> like, you know, like you just see, I want it. I would like not to feel the same way I felt about that other webtoon I mentioned where I got to the end I'm like I feel betrayed <laughs> I feel angry so like I don't I don't know if, what what do you think do you think this is going to end in in tears a mix of both or actually positive we're definitely going to cry but I think the outcome like after the dust after the dust settles I think it will be a little bit more all right than we started off with because purple hyacinth isn't that sort of I don't think it's that sort of story to just keep the tragedies coming eventually the sun has to come back right the light has to come <laughs> back to it all so I think that like we are going to cry a lot <laughs> as we get to the end but um purple hyacinth just I don't think is that sort of story to kill off all the main characters or whatever. I think Lauren and Kieran will survive to the end. And hopefully him and Will. I am a fool. And I do think that all of the O4 are going to survive to the end. Oh, you guys are so much more positive than I am in how I think this is going to end. Like, I'm like, I see how this ends. And I, I think Lauren's Usually... going to be the last standing, to be honest. I think it's I'm... just going to be Lauren in the end. <laughs> I'm like known for my negativity when it comes to these sort of things but like I genuinely think that the story will end like really nicely well that gives me hope I don't want this is not an advocate like this should end horribly but like the more <laughs> I get into the story I'm like mm, mm, like like, you need, like again we've had so much tragedy that I'm like I need the signs that like something's gonna happen good to the Scooby gang because if it doesn't <laughs> I'm just gonna be like here we go what's the next thing anyway we should probably continue with the, the chapter reading <laughs> I mean I could get into like how I don't think Kieran is gonna die at all like if you guys want me to but that'd be a bit of a tangent for another episode because yeah. we're because, um yeah it's already we're already yeah <laughs> quite a going, lot going okay so 
so, you know, right, currently we're sus of Dokken, who says, you know, their headquarters were here in almost two years. And now he turns away again. And he, we're, we're like at extreme close up level. They're still like, he's still whole cradling his face. It's beautiful. But now he looks away again and he says, this is why the leader has always been so unforgiving of the people who want to abandon the PS, which makes me think like me, I can't mm-hmm. abandon the PS because the leader think, you know, is going to be unforgiving and kill me. Mm-hmm. And he might also be referring to the, the other Sinclairs, right? To Rachel and Alexander, because mm-hmm. it seemed like they wanted to abandon the PS and they were, they died and he kind of yeah. watched it happen. So like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because that was like, it, I mean, I guess I just suspected him both ways. I suspected him of outing the Snapdragon to the Royals and I suspected him of being in the PS also. So who knows? And Dawkins asks, do the secret services know anything? Oh, this question is so interesting to me. Sorry, Tristan asks, do the secret service know anything about the leader's next move? And he says, not for now. So the fact that he's asking him in the present tense, is like, what? Why are you asking him? Do you think he knows, like, what uh, from the leader's perspective? Like, I mean, obviously, like, I guess you could say, okay, he's just saying, oh, you you would know what the Secret Service knows. But I'm thinking, like, maybe he's asking him because he knows, like, what about the leader's next move from mm-hmm. the inside? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> if we go down the theory of everyone be sus, then you are correct. And everyone be sus. So I, I have no more to add to this scene because at this point, there's some clear lines being drawn here. Like, I think we just have to wait for the next move with these two, like to really, to really know more. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, when Tristan says, the, do the secret services know anything about the leader's next move? I mean, Tristan. You are not being that slick here. I see you. You seem to be trying to get information from Doc in like a bit exactly. of interrogation. Like, you, it's like an interrogation, it feels like almost, because like that sort of question. And then it's the intimate, I'm pulling your face in closer, but it doesn't seem as like the nice intimate anymore. It seems in the like, yeah. oh, I'm taking advantage of this situation moment. That's and, what like, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thinking. Exactly. Why- like it's like, ugh. The tension changes from the moment before <laughs> to here. And then and then we have to get to these last lines because these are like, yeah. And then he says, mm-hmm. no one knows. And it's a lie. And we're like, <gasps> God, he totally knows. <gasps> he knows. <laughs> now we know we're confirmed. Our beautiful yeah. Dokken is something. We don't even know what, but he's something. Yeah, we know he's something. Again, the sesometimeter goes up the whole time. But then again, as I said, we just have to see more to know the extent. But I mean, that line just was, that was like the nail in the coffin moment where you're like, mm, okay, okay, oh, no. okay. Okay. No. <laughs> I and think then, the lie is saying that, right, that he does know the leader's next moves, or at least somebody knows the leader's next moves. It doesn't that necessarily mean that he knows, right? But if, if the lie is no one knows the leader's next moves, then it means somebody knows the leader's next moves, either him or someone else. Wait a minute. And that he knows, though, because he needs to know that that person knows, right? Well, I think we could say theoretically, man, nah, it wouldn't fit in, but like theoretically, somebody knows the leader's next moves, right? So like, mm-hmm. I guess that's, but no, that's whatever. But Doc didn't have to be aware because if he wasn't aware that anyone knew the leader's next moves, he would have said it wouldn't have been a lie. But by saying no one knows and it being live, he's aware that someone out there is aware of it. Yeah. And then also him being his saying that like someone betrayed the Snapdragon, someone knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Tristan, or not Tristan, Dokken, there yeah. is a giant red target being painted and it is being painted right on you. <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful scene and it's just like and so dagger in the heart way this is this is this comic this is why i believe what i do (laughs) because i'm like "Mm -hmm. you'll take everything i love away you'll do it and i know you'll do it with glee okay so i'm doing uh lauren (laughs) Lauren, right 
So I'm going to power through this. We can get to the end because I think we can talk about it as one whole. And so we can get through, you know, the rest of this. But see Lauren and she's like, <gasps> you know, like muffling herself because we like she is shook to her core. And then you see Doc and kind of like peek out of his eye and one the corner kind of notice and she like, you know, scuttles away. And then uh, Tristan kind of grabs uh, Dawkins' face and he's like, hey, look at me. We're going to be okay. That's not manipulative. And then they lean in for a kiss. <laughs> That's just me adding that, by the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> he's like, hey, look at me. We're going to be okay. Leans in. And like, they almost kiss or they're going to kiss. And then we're like, Lauren's like, no, 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 running. Cause you know, she just like shook right now. And she has her mouth covered. And then it's like all of this, um, all of this, this entire time because of the Royals, the Snapdragons works dismissed as an Antarctic pass of lives by all the official newspapers. And then we have Abel um, saying uh, like flashing to Abel. We were only a handful of members back then closer to the apostles. Apparently the leader was one of the Snapdragon survivors. And then goes back to Lauren. Did he know about my parents too? And then Abel and the very first few others became his first apostles and she's like she's like having a breakdown man <laughs> like she's just like oh gosh this information like this is going down and then it says uh they push the man before the leader they push the man before the leader over the edge and then it goes is that why my parents followed him driven by the same anger how did they escape the massacre and all the ministers knew even will's father and she goes into her room and like shuts the door and she's like oh my gosh you know like she's dying inside and like <laughs> But it was like, literally she, like, this is like a moment for her. It says, but it was forever hidden. And she's just like breathing in and out, like kind of hyperventilating. And that's where that scene ends. So let's talk about that scene, guys. What are your thoughts on Lauren's like about to die inside? Um, Girl, I have to say, Lauren just suffers a lot this whole cartoon. <laughs> she just has blow after blow after blow to everything that she thought about life. I mean, this poor person, she can't trust anyone anymore. Everything she thought she knew is just totally overturned. The people she loves are now like not necessarily good people anymore. It's just awful for her, just awful. <laughs> I mean, we now have it confirmed sort of that Dawkins and Tristan find talking about the Phantom Scythe and talking about class oppression, they find it hot and like- <laughs> You're not wrong. Like- <laughs> That's their love language. Oh gosh. Uh, also, Sophie Neff, don't be shy. Show us the panel where they actually kiss. Oh yes. <laughs> don't be Please. shy. Drop the panel. I think that would just make it a little bit more like I uh, like would that be gratifying or also like horrifying in some <laughs> other way? <laughs> like twisted, <laughs> twist the dagger. Because he's like, shh, look at me don't worry about it don't worry about it like I'm like just why what is happening stop oh gosh but I like oh. feel Lauren at this moment this is a moment of her like oh shit like what like like there is no there's no composure of Lauren right now there's no composed Lauren Lauren has like left the building <laughs> she's like oh gosh no oh. you know what I find interesting is that she says that they put this is a very like rational thought of hers she says they push the man before the leader over the edge which i'm assuming by the man before the leader it's like the man who before he became a leader meaning like mm-hmm. before he became that person right that i that's the interpretation mm-hmm. i think so yeah so that's pretty clever of her to be able to like kind of think of that now um where she has that like level of sympathy for the leader which she never had before mm-hmm. and until now it's just been endless hatred right yeah, and that's where the progress is coming in with her arc in 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 interesting. But yeah, she's I what I think about this is it, the scene is interesting is because we're getting to the level of Lauren being like I can't handle this 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 is getting like he needs to call Kieran okay that's just yeah. that's just my yeah. little romantic edge he needs to run to his apartment right now okay <laughs> I mean like, okay look 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 in eighty four she was sharing all this information with Kieran and how much did he share with her almost nothing he just bit after telling her that the kids were dead with no further explanation lauren don't go to karen he's not going to tell you anything he's going to use the information and then do his own thing with it mm, like he's not going to tell you anything in return he just yeah, dips I'm pretty sure after he every single big reveal sorry go ahead sorry i interrupted you yeah i don't trust karen especially after um this theory i had i think i told you yeah. mindy i know i've told you about it versa i'm not so sure what, what's but. our Kieran? What's our Kieran? I mean, if you're telling me Kieran is this girl, like we know, but like, <laughs> what, is your, what is your theory? <laughs> so again, I guess I'm 
I know I've said it on the podcast before, but basically my theory is that the leader was the one who ordered Loon. Wait. <laughs> was like Wait. So Wait. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> stop. Stop. Just, just don't know. No. no. Like, think about it. I don't want to think. <laughs> just think like, about it. <laughs> oh, gosh. I just, you know, I just, I'm letting go at this point. <laughs> just like, you know. <laughs> uh okay okay so let's go to the next scene how about we go to the next scene i mean like if that theory is true and lauren went to tell kieran about this then doc and tristan would probably get targets on their backs as like the leader would probably go after them i mean everyone would die like like, (laughs) you know like you're like telling me a hot mess would become like a volcano and then <laughs> and then no one survives like that's what you're telling me in this moment and I I love it but I hate it <laughs> I, hate I, I have my my biggest like um I guess puncture to that theory is that the fact that Kieran almost killed her um, yeah and then and then he just like stopped and you know was enthralled by her eyes and then he's like well I don't know why I you know they both don't know why he hesitated so that to me is the only reason that mm-hmm. well it's the biggest reason oh, that I, I feel like that's my biggest ordered. question as well like the hesitation doesn't really make that much sense especially how he felt like I had an explanation for it like maybe he was just like I don't know why I hesitated because if he did kill her on the spot then he wouldn't have agreed to the leader's like proposition of um, loon but someone also brought up how he felt humanity after it so like i don't really know i'm sorry i couldn't really hear you hear what you said someone brought up that what um someone brought up how like kieran how like not killing her made him feel human again so that wouldn't really line up with the theory so yeah that the whole hesitation thing is like the biggest problem with yeah that that theory i just my brain is a little fried right now guys too i'm like okay (laughs) okay so we're gonna we're gonna like and also I've been I just like been eating mints next to me so if anyone's listening here's this chewing you're like you're a monster Rissa I know I am and I should have muted myself eating <laughs> mints I didn't hear it okay wait, hold up. You now you'll never this, now people will be like wait a second no, okay. <laughs> I'm like oh no I've doomed myself I do I do want to get to this next scene though because it's like mm-hmm. yeah it's good stuff it's good stuff yeah good stuff good stuff indeed indeed but, uh, before I- <laughs> Before I start narrating that, I just want to go back to the line where Lauren's like, all of this, this entire time, because the royals, the snapdragons were dismissed as an anarchist pack of lies by all the official newspapers. We knew this. We knew it. We called yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It was the royals the entire time. They are our Scooby-Doo villain. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, to a certain point, again, we need to... We're, we're at a point. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, that was like the Scooby-Doo mask reveal. It was like, aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> that would be the, the biggest twist if it turns out the Royals are not the villains. That would be like meta oh, yeah. meta. <laughs> meta. Be like super meta. It was <laughs> Lauren the entire time. <laughs> I, I know. I was thinking that. Like, is there a conceivable way in which Lauren is the leader? <laughs> I could not. I could not find it. Like, that. because she is a police officer. So she is technically enforcing the system. Oh, but gosh. what if it's us? What if we're the villains? Because we are the ones who are complicit in the current ways. Oh, God. What if, what if, like, what if I'm the bad guy? <laughs> or something like that i'll accept you it this we're in a society it's fine it's we fine in society this is how, yeah we're in a society this is how we survive i can live with that like if this is my society i have to survive in the gray area is where i'm gonna live because <laughs> what's the alternative i'm gonna be blown up in a train station <laughs> i don't want to go that way i don't want to go <laughs> and that shows you more about my character anyway back to this chapter so okay, then okay, we cut yeah. to yeah, so then we cut to a woman who's running. She's um, breathing very heavily and sweating as she's running from this person. It's very dark. She's out in the open, running between, or not really out in the open, but there's nothing really hiding her. She's, it seems to be an alley or a street um, as we see buildings on her side, and she's crying. And then she is stabbed through the neck, and she looks shocked, and she, she it's very silent, just or not really silent, but he stops sort of breathing. Like we don't see her huffing and puffing. And um, yeah, then we get the stab. She, there's tears in her eyes and we get a, a better view of her face sort of. 
And as she collapses, we see Bella walking behind her. And because of the distance, it does sort of seem like Bella threw the knife and like, damn, that's some good mm-hmm. throwing skills. Like, I got to give it to her. <laughs> Gruesome murder. But also wearing heels. So talented. she was probably running after her in heels. <laughs> yeah. But she's still like that strut. She's just strutting. Mm-hmm. She's not running. She's not puffing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. She's in her old outfit that we've seen, uh, the red corset and uh, jacket. And the woman pops as we see some blood and we see the handle of the knife. And Bella leans down and says, one down, two more to go. And before someone said that, like, why was Bella wiping the blade on herself, like, or on her fabric? Because, like, it's venomous. But now that I look at it, I think she's wiping on the dress of the person she just killed. And we see the face and she's obviously using the golden fiber venom again seeing how there's blood around the eyes, blood around the mouth. It's something we've grown to recognize. And one one down, two more to go. What do you guys think of that? No, oh, no, who is she going to kill next? Kieran, Lauren, anybody, help. I'm my so feelings. nervous. And she'll look beautiful doing it as she kills all my feelings because that's all <laughs> I expect from Bella. At this, I mean, yeah, but. I actually just realized I did see something in a stream that maybe I think I know who it might be, but never mind. But I can't say anything. So <laughs> no stream spoilers. Yeah. Um, no. And also the truth is I'm not even sure. So because <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I when, when I found out something was spoilery, I was like I actually exited. I was like, I don't want to know. So but I did see something. So we'll see. <laughs> mm-hmm. Something I find a bit odd though is that uh, she looks kind of somber. It's more somber than we've really seen her before. Maybe like, it is Kieran that she has to kill and she doesn't want to. No, I think it's just a lot of people have hoped that she didn't feel as remorseful as killing as she seems to be. And Lauren hasn't been in a lot of crucial Bella scenes. Mm-hmm. So like it is very possible that Bella does not enjoy killing, especially considering her past. Um, and if Redcliffe is PS related, he might have been the one who got her into the PS. Because, like, Bella, she was an orphan taken off the streets. And then she was used for child labor. And some man got rich off her. And, I mean, just saying that, like, some man got rich off, like, an orphan girl is not a great phrase, like, just on paper. Yeah, I just have to, this is, I will always object to to the, to saying children being used as child labor. Because, like, it's, like, the most fun thing in the world to be in the circus. I mean, like, I, like, it's literally where people would run away to the circus. Because that's, like, the most fun thing you could do. But um, I do suspect Radcliffe probably is a bad guy, but I don't know. We don't know yet. But anyway, but Mm -hmm. I, but circus to me is always fun, so. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. fun, but they couldn't really consent to it. That's the problem. Because like they're kids and you'd usually expect like the parents permission like if they're too young to consent then you would ask for the parents consent but they don't have parents and so there was no parent to consent for them and then also if they had to train like depending on what they were using it's just very dangerous and Bella used fire and she would have to learn how to wield fire and I think as like you know a kid she looks maybe like eight when she's found eight or ten maybe twelve at the most I don't know because I think we have for to, kids to we have be to, wielding fire. I I totally hear that. Um, I'm just I mean, again, I guess I I should remove my real world thing and see we'll see what it is like in this story. But um, I mean, this is my own parenting thing. Like I think kids at eight and ten are pretty pretty much like I feel like they they have some grasp of like what they like to do. Um, I would have thought it was super exciting you know, as an eight-year-old or 10-year-old, but, and also she was playing with matches before, so you got the impression mm-hmm. she liked fire, um, but we'll see, I guess, within the story, what happened in, in this story. I mean, I wouldn't say that she was playing with matches when she was on the street. She looked also very somber there, like, as she looked at it, because, and I think, was she in a blanket there? Because it seemed to be, like, her main source of heat, and we see that, like, in Great Chapel, things are very bad, and we see, I do remember that there are a lot of people in blankets, especially in the winter. And so she, and being a kid, she was probably desperate. So I'm not really sure how much of a really choice. <laughs> I don't know how much she really chose to let Redcliffe take her. It was more like if she did have some sort of say, it was out of like 
necessity and out of just survival. So it, it just, I don't know, yeah, I Rycliffe guess. gives me weird vibes because he is using these children's need to like survive and need to eat and just basic needs to profit off. Like, so I don't know, it's, it's sketchy. <laughs> So anyway, it probably so. is sketchy, but I'm saying if theoretically he could be like a savior who like saved these mm -hmm. children and maybe he is profit sharing with them. I don't think mm -hmm. so in terms of, in this story, I don't think so, but like theoretically yeah. it could be. <laughs> that's I think what a lot of people probably in the world thought. That's why no one like was really regulating him because if people were like, why is this man using children and getting rich off them? They'd probably have taken him down like way before this, but no one has really stopped Redcliffe. And we don't know of any controversies around the circus itself. No one's really brought up the whole issue that like, hey, these are orphan kids. And Radcliffe made himself a fortune off orphan kids. So like, I'm not sure. I don't think anyone cared about those orphan kids because they were in the streets. Like, doesn't seem like they have orphanages there. Like, I don't think anyone cared about them. <laughs> like, Yeah, no one cared about them. But, and it is, I guess it is kind of good that Radcliffe did provide them, but he did provide them with like a safe space but the reason he was providing them with this with like a safe space and um like a better environment is because he knew that he could get rich off them he knew that he could make a profit off them so i don't think that he would have done what he did had he not had the circus in mind mm -hmm. that's a, a thing i think about <laughs> And anyways, well, we'll find out recipe. along with all the other mysteries here. <laughs> to the that's attic. Actually, actually, I bet when we do meet Radcliffe, it will not resolve any, <laughs> it won't bring any answers. It'll just bring like 20 more questions. I oh, agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> this is my ER face where I'm like, yep, this is gonna happen. Like that's, <laughs> that's how I feel most of the time because it's like behind this door is another door. And then like, that's a constant, constant feeling of this, this, comic <laughs> so um, anyway so miss bella here oh, um yeah. is just okay <laughs> sorry back to what i was thinking um yeah she looks pretty somber and because of the theory that like she doesn't actually enjoy killing and we haven't really seen any more scenes with her where she would like really lie about that um it it is quite possible and I do sort of think that the bluff in episode 52 was Bella. <laughs> and because that relates to the whole, like, the leader and Kieran are working together with Loon oh, No, no, it has to be both. Okay, both. <laughs> but it was bleak bluff. Only one. No, bluff. it meant bleak, bleak bluffs. So they just forgot the S. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> but anyway, oh, uh, yeah. Um, we haven't really been, we haven't seen many scenes where Bella would have been able to lie about her true intention like when it comes to killing and then it also makes sense why Bella didn't kill Lauren in that alleyway that part I agree that is suspicious there's there's got to be a reason she didn't kill her Lauren did give or sorry Bella did give like a reason like there would have been too many people and I don't think that was a lie but it could have also been a half truth like yeah Bella but then she goes and kill yeah he kills sake at the circus it was like a way more people yeah I feel like <laughs> so yeah i do think that bella does not like killing and f has confirmed that we will get more focus with the character and i think that does become obvious in the next part of this scene yep <laughs> and so like i do hope we get a bella redemption arc because that would be just pure tragedy if we did not so next scene it does seem reminiscent of the circus i won't lie that cart that we see which establishes a new setting. It looks like the circus and the trees behind them. It looks like the place where Kiwi were in episode 77, which was near the circus. There are so, circus signs yeah. there, right? That, that looks like a circus sign in the back. There's a poster. It says, it's like a text on top. It does look like it's a picture of the circus tent. So I think it's a, maybe oh, it's really? like, maybe that's where she's living now, you know, because like it's a traveling circus, Ooh. you know, they live in these parts. Oh shoot, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's on the left side when she's walking. Mm -hmm. Looks like a circus tent to me. Yeah, and I think we saw like that 
the cart thing in during the circus arc so it was like oh this this seems to be the circus and so like she's probably um in a portable home i'm not sure what it's called yeah um, i'm very big on the tiny houses so i was like oh look at yeah. a tiny house <laughs> but yeah she it's she seems to be living um at the circus and so she op- she approaches her house or her home and she notices that the lights are on and she's like why are the lights turned on and that's why it's not confirmed to be her home but it does seem like it is her home because she has changed outfits by now so she's not in her bloodied outfit or her assassin outfit and if she's like why are the lights on then it probably means that last time she was there the lights were not on so she's and that sort of seem gives the feeling of familiarity with it so it's probably her home especially how she walks in so she opens it and she stops as she realizes what is going on at the end of her home there is a woman sitting on the desk with beautiful long hair that's creeping down and she's sipping t- that woman is sipping tea and then she puts she rests her cup down on a saucer which she's also holding and smiles a bit and then we get this beautiful panel of Bella stuttering as she says Naira and and she looks in shock she's totally shocked and then um, we see Darcy and Darcy turns around and says fancy a cup of tea (laughs) Bella and the chapter ends off there and just damn I thought honestly I that took me by surprise I was like I thought after this I was like oh I can't believe the New Year's party arc ended so quickly I was <laughs> hoping for more Darcy but then this chapter happened I was like oh my god oh my god indeed what is going on here <laughs> what is happening uh, I Darcy I thought you were a good person please please I oh no we no one so is safe confused. we don't know anything nothing everything is upside down Mm-hmm. this had me panicking because like oh no please Darcy I want you to be a good person please mm-hmm. but um the way she says Bella and they're on a first name basis nickname even because that's not even Bella's real uh, full name I mean even Kieran didn't say Bella he said the full name like Bella Donna Davenport I think they but, have like uh relationship mm-hmm. vibes yeah or ex-relationship vibes I think the level this was the of chapter of ships <laughs> yes in a way in this chapter just like skyrocketed yeah yeah i mean and they the creators know it is um so ta heterosexuality so mm-hmm. i mean definitely with uh doc and tristan uh, very possibly with uh with nira and <laughs> yep bella <laughs> oh my god what is going on see this is just like we don't know anything everything is confusing we just don't know anything <laughs> that's it that's all i can say mm-hmm. okay i don't even know where to begin to speculate like we just don't know <laughs> I, mean, I mean i can i can put together like a whole bunch of stuff but like they're all arbitrary mm-hmm. i had a theory like a while back like a hot while back many months ago like from january i think before uh i even knew darcy was actually coming to the comic and she was just like a name drop in 67. Um, I was like, what if Stefan is trying to get Will to marry someone from another PS family to like get like a power, a more powerful like PS um, alliance? Because maybe Stefan fears his own position and he wants backup. So he's trying to get uh, his son to get the favor of another big PS family. So Darcy <laughs> having an association with Bella does not help like going against that theory. This chapter was like mentally exhausting for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> first of all, it was taking me to one place and then it took me to another. And then it was like, lo and behold, my friend, I'm like, I know you're going to, do- this is like an abusive relationship at this point. <laughs> like I knew, like, I'm starting to feel like this is kind of going, but I'm in it. I'm in it for the end. I'm just kidding. I, I would never like 
discredit the comic by calling it that but you know what I mean guys like, you know like I'm like ah, I trusted you JK I never really trusted I just wanted to believe that like I understood like that's all I want to know is like I know where this is going and then it doesn't except for the royals I guess that was I, I will know. say this the only thing that I feel like I could speculate based on this is that Naira Darcy looks very in control and she looks like she knew she was going to shock Bella by appearing like yeah. that. And she's relishing that hour <laughs> she has. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm going to appear super calm because I want to freak you out even more and show that I'm in control. Mm-hmm. She's very at home as well. Like she, it, there's a, what seems to be a teapot behind. She just Darcy, made herself. So home, like yeah. she totally made herself that tea. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. On the desk, you can see the teapot. Like she totally made that tea with using things from Bella's home yeah, like, like top level intimidating I just yeah get into your home which was probably locked and take your stuff and without telling you and here I am and the like power. I'm responding. <laughs> yeah her power Ooh, boy. I mean, living for the energy that is a, like <laughs> iconic all polite and flustered at the party where she's like oh well my father yeah he'll, he'll be perfect I'd love to go horseback riding with you to this <laughs> Yeah, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, next week has to come, like, now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, we need we need more. I need. I just need to not feel like my whole <laughs> world just got flipped upside down. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, no, you continue. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I just rambled this point. I think, honestly, about this chapter, I've said everything I haven't said. It's like, I was surprised, but I'm not surprised. And <laughs> will we get answers? Probably not. And will this end happy? I'm not that positive, but you know, it could, it could. So that's all I got to say. And also no one is safe. That's all. That's like legitimately all I have to say in my life about this. Anyway, but what else do you have to say? <laughs> I think I signed up for like all the episodes that were like left <laughs> for season two that we um, can predict will happen. So I will be here next week and I will be screaming here next week. <laughs> also, I love Bella's new outfit and she's braless. And I can't stop thinking about the phrase, free the titty, save the city. <laughs> what is that? What is it's, that? It's so dumb. She's just free the like titty, stupid save gorgeous. the city. I and I just, that. I can see Bella becoming the embodiment of that like later on when she's like going up against the royals with loon and delay yeah. and eclipse and whatnot but like she really is super gorgeous in the scene it's a yeah, violent yeah. scene but like when you look at her you're like mm, okay you're like you're yeah you're just pretty like oh you just did something horrendous but just so pretty the struggle of my life mm-hmm. same thing with kieran right i mean kieran's also beautiful and and, and does terrible things we're like oh he's so gorgeous same thing with bella <laughs> as i said the moral thing the moral thing of where your bias comes in and you're like oh how terrible but you're like oh but they hot and you also I know mean, she's dressing this way presumably to just go home and go to sleep right like it doesn't look like i mean she may have been expecting to go somewhere else but like she's like oh let me just dress beautifully and just go in my bed <laughs> like, bella dresses for herself and herself only and again i love the energy like (laughs) you did not dress for anyone else it's just her she does what she wants whatever relationship they have they're probably a good match in terms of like dominance and Mm -hmm. slyness and wittiness and talent Mm -hmm. i have to say this chapter was an accumulation chapter this was like at least they're giving us more like i feel like this was like a pivot point chapter if that makes sense like this is where we're like oh we're hitting into this now we gotta like move into this other direction and I just yeah we'll just have to see where it goes but I I really liked this one in particular um but I have I do have this little bit of frustration where I'm like give me answers now (laughs) like I want to know but I like the intrigue but I want the answers and it might be a while before either you know well, they're milking this <laughs> they're milking it for all it's worth again 
you know, like at this point, this point, I'm going to agree that like this could get real wild west. It's like Lauren was the villain all along. <laughs> and like it all twists into this horrible thing that I just like, I don't know if they keep milking it. But I, I trust in them. And I don't want to because they hurt me. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can just say now, what is love? Baby, don't, baby, hurt, don't me. hurt me. Don't hurt me. But I love it. See, that's the thing, though. I love how it's done. So Wait, that's the song like, from Monster, Ooh. right? I love it when you lie. Right? The, the song with love. Rihanna and um, Eminem. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just gonna stand. That is like the epitome of this comic. That song <laughs> with Rihanna and Eminem. Just gonna stand here and watch me burn. You know, like. That's all right. That's all right. Yep. Yep. There we go. There we go. We. I feel like if people listening to this, we went on a lot of tangents. But again, this is one of those episodes that is like accumulation of like all these mm-hmm. theories and thoughts. And Sully was like, guess what? Dun, 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 dun. You know nothing. <laughs> or do you? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> this is like literally our gayest chapter to date so far and like oh, yes hella yes. gay in the best way <laughs> living for it <laughs> the best kind of hella gay too where we're like <laughs> and again it wasn't all sunshine and roses but it's like ships ships <laughs> and like... then ships that are sinking possibly <laughs> i don't know i don't know Lockie could only dream to be darkest on Oh my gosh. Dagestan's literally like the ship that's doing the best right now, except maybe for Lula. Yeah. They're like, actually Lula together. Lula and they are the only ones that are like some semblance of doing all right right now. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Have you forgotten the butler and the lamp lady? They're mm-hmm. mad. Oh, yeah. Actually, no. I, I have something against the lady and I hate her for this oh. reason. <laughs> well, we, I think she's suspicious and I think you're the one who like first brought that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's yeah. it's a joke thing that I do, oh. but like, I just I don't trust the lady at all, and I don't their relationship just oh no because they have there's a power imbalance and Lady A because she employs yeah. Butler she technically controls his funds and seeing how clingy she is if the Butler wanted to do other things and she would like she might stop him and like because like he's financially dependent on her and stuff and that's just like <laughs> there's a good bit of comedy to it though that's fun it's, it's that's, like, fun for like... sure but if we were gonna say these ships were in a race there are like most of these ships are like either drowning at sea <laughs> have been, been built <laughs> haven't been built, <laughs> been built don't even know where they're going and then there's these three who are like we're rowing in a circle but we're but we're we're going somewhere and no one is going the right direction like that's how i'm going to explain it the bar is so low for ships in this this comic that if one of them was just like nothing happened today we would be like yay nothing happened yay <laughs> but that's not what's going to go down and no one should believe otherwise i'm just like going to break that news to all y'all like no even the butler man even the butler man did he really win in the end mm. Mm. and lula are um they're doing fine right now Dagestan is lagging a little bit behind because of like you know all that susness to both of them but lula <laughs> Lula, they're both of fine concerns fine. Me Kiwi. it's like oh. they're okay they're they're okay Per, per Rissa, Lula just got hit by a truck. So yeah, she did. Uh-oh. She got Lula. hit by a truck right when they got out there. I think they're probably the closest. Okay, that one <laughs> might be the closest. The Tristan and Doc. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy. I will still ship things though. Like that doesn't stop my shipping. But like, if we were like, <laughs> is this not one of those comics I can say? And yeah, and they progress so far in their relationship, and like things are happening. It's more like. Uh, well, they didn't die, and uh, no one killed each other. other. Like, the, <laughs> they had the checklists are different. <laughs> but Sorry, yeah, guys, but I feel like I'm just rambling a bit the behind, story. but catching up. Uh, mm-hmm. Loki is literally at the bottom of the ocean right now. It's kind of floating <laughs> up, but like, I uh, they're still they're still no, stuck down there. No, yeah, they're done. Like, <laughs> the Larcy uh, has just taken sail, and it is going full speed. <laughs> Larcy. <laughs> The Larcy, I think that's the one that I've seen uh, most okay. people refer to it as. So mm. that's the ship name I am now using. Nice. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I mean, that remains to be seen, but I think next chapter is going to be a good one. Yeah, Hopefully. I'm so excited for next week. Also, just yeah. like, I can't stop thinking about like Darcy's power 
to get Bella of all people flustered and to get her stuttering and get her to look shocked because we have never seen Bella look like this before. So like, damn. We got some power players, more people, more people on the mm-hmm. chessboard. This one was a fun one. And I feel like if any if anyone wants to take how nerdy we are, like we just take things to the next level. Ships, theories, like <laughs> give us a crumb and we'll build the the monument. Like you just yes. gotta understand this is how our mind works. <laughs> give us the crumb, we'll bake the loaf. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. We're just like, look, there it is, there it is. But I mean, I I I will say that talking to you guys made me feel a little more optimistic that maybe this will end in some horrific way. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I just feel like every time I think like things are turning up, they go immediately 10 steps down. <laughs> like, well, Here's what you could do. You could just reread this and take, don't li- don't read the text, but just like reread Doc and interest in loving each other. That's so Yes, beautiful. I will just keep with my like, oh, at least I... I so what you're telling me is like at least like count count your blessings <laughs> count like <laughs> count the blessings of the cute scene you were blessed with <laughs> and and the new potential ship at the end i'll see it like that instead of like you're building me up to tear me down again anyway but <laughs> it's so fun anyway this was so fun yeah. i love i love when i'm able to to join and kind of gab about things and uh foot is and and mindy are excellent uh at theories i'm more i use comedy as a way to kind of express my feelings so that's how i go i'm more like the blunt the the blunt force where where mindy is more of the softer touch foot is more like the fine detail calligraphy pen and then i come in (laughs) like stuff happened people died (laughs) you know (laughs) so it's fun different kinds of fans how they think about things Mm -hmm. so yeah. So much fun. Yeah. This conversation was a blast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything is always a delight talking with you guys. Oh. Well, thank you so much. And I will see you guys next week. And we'll yeah. see what awaits us then. Oh, yeah. Probably. How, we'll, how we're going to be run over and steamrolled next week. <laughs> if, if I'm steamrolled, I'm going to put rest in peace on my Instagram and I'm tagging both of you and just going to be like, <laughs> you'll know. You'll know. I'm just going to be like, hmm. <laughs> And that will be my thing until the next chapter. Just like FYI, you too. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, I don't know how usually we finish these things. Is it like, and that's a wrap, Mindy? Like, because like, I always forget. <laughs> we just say good night. Okay. And I'll see you next week. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank Bye. you for having us, as always. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Always thank you. Good night. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Mm.